Hey y'all and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two brushes, the smooth brush, which as you should know from previous videos is usable from every single brush and the flatten brush. Now, since the smooth brush is able to be used from basically any brush by holding the shift key, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. It's it's basically just, you know, a brush that smooths out vertices. So we're going to spend the majority of time uh, in this video on the flatten brush. So uh, without further ado, let's get started talking about the smooth brush. All right, so the smooth brush basically smooths out transitions between vertices. So I'm just using the layer brush real quick to create kind of two little plateaus. Uh, and then we'll check out the vertice distribution between them. So you can see that most of the vertices are on the top here and that these faces along the sides of the layers that we've just added up are pretty large and stretched out. So we go back to sculpting and we go to use the smooth brush, which has a hotkey of S. So whenever you hit the S key, you can just switch to the smooth brush. And then I'm just going to go up and down the sides of the layers that we made for plateaus and then we'll check out the vertice distribution again and you can see that as i'm going up and down this smooth area it's creating kind of this valley pattern and so now if we look at the vertice distribution on this side you can see the faces are still very stretched but it's a pretty even and smooth transition with vertices and faces between both tops of the layers so you can actually see that that's now what it looks like because it's kind of smoothed that out. So that's the effect that you can get with the smooth brush. You can get that from basically every brush by holding the shift key. So I don't generally just switch to the smooth brush all the time unless I have a lot of smoothing to do and I want to just only focus on smoothing as one of like the last touch up things that I'm going to do uh, for my model. Very basic, very necessary, but you're not gonna use it a whole lot on its own, just use the shift key. All right, so now let's talk about the flatten brush. Now the flatten brush has a weird hotkey. In fact, if we bring it up, you'll see that the hotkey is shift T. Now, I'm not sure why it's shift T, but F, as you know, is already taken with the radius, so it can't just be F. So don't get that confused. The hotkey is Shift T, or you can just come over here and hit the flatten brush. Now, if we take a look at the image over on the right, you can see that it's very much just going to flatten out areas. They were pretty good at naming brushes for what they do here. So, you know, it's going to flatten out sections, and we'll just increase the radius here, and we'll flatten out this section so that you can see the effect that it's going to have and the effect is being mirrored so now we can see if we rotate to the side that's basically flat we just need to kind of continue to flatten it out now the flatten brush has some pretty cool uh, things that you can do if you change some of its settings now we're not going to look at plane offset because it doesn't really matter um, but what's really cool is if we change the sculpt plane then we can get some really cool stuff. So by default, it's set to the area plane, which basically just means um, the area inside your brush, that's what it's going to flatten. And it's gonna to try to make all of those vertices inside your brush area, the radius here, uh, flat, as flat as possible. So if we just keep going in this section and we just keep circling around, we're going to get a flattened area that's very much going to just match that pattern of flatness so very easy very easy to understand pretty simple and then we can switch over to the view plane now the view plane is a bit different because what it's going to do is it's going to flatten vertices towards the view not the area so if we look at something let's say we look at it from this angle right now all of these were flattened watch what happens as i flatten pieces so not only are the rounded pieces flattening out, the pieces that were previously flattened are now being raised up. The pieces are now being raised up so that they can be flattened in the same direction that I am looking at. So whereas before everything was being flattened for the area plane, 
Now it's being flattened for the view plane. So if I change my view slightly and go to flatten it up here, you can see the effect that it's having on these vertices because it's now flattening them in a different direction. And so it's still trying to make it flat, but it's just moving vertices in a different direction in order to match it with the direction we were viewing when we started our stroke. All right, cool. Now we have the X and Y planes here. And so the X plane is going to flatten things on the X axis. So as we flatten areas, you can see that it's just flattening it on the X axis. It's not going to flatten it wherever we do this. It's going to flatten it towards the X axis. It's not going to flatten it towards a view or towards, uh, you know, the area just towards that X axis there. All right, now this is getting a little convoluted, so we're going to go ahead and, and just uh, open up a new sculpting to finish showing these things off. And so we've shown the X off. This is the Y plane now. All right, so now that it's set to the Y plane, it's always going to flatten it towards the Y direction. No matter where we go, it's going to flatten vertices towards that Y uh, plane and vertice. Now that is basically the front, so there's the Y. It's going to do it that way. And then we have the Z plane, which just like the rest of them, flattens towards the Z axis. And that's really it, okay? Now, there is a second part to this brush, and that is the contrast brush. So to show you that, um, we're going to switch the brush over to uh, the positive side, and then switch this to uh, basically just the area plane again. So whereas before, if we were going to flatten this, you know, we could flatten it towards the area plane and try to get a flattened surface and everything that would be easy. With the contrast brush, what's going to happen is it's actually going to pull vertices away from that surface. And as I go over this surface, you can see what's happening. It's pulling and pushing vertices away from that flattened area directly towards me or away from me or the direction I'm facing is what I mean by that okay so that's the contrast brush I'm gonna be honest I don't use this brush much because there's not a lot of reason to use this brush the contrast brush that is the flattened brush I use all the time but the contrast brush really doesn't do anything you can get that same effect with the grab brush or the snake hook brush so um, I generally don't use the contrast brush, but I just wanted to show you that that is what's going to happen. And so we'll go ahead and switch back to the negative and then kind of flatten this area back out, which it does pretty quickly, gets rid of that contrast, and it's back to the way that it should be. All right, so that's basically the flatten brush. All right, so with these two brushes covered, we are more than halfway done with the sculpting brushes that we can use in Blender. And I look forward to finishing out this course with you guys. So thanks for watching. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in that next video.